the next part because I ask God, why did you do this? Why did you do this in my life? Why did you give me this great mercy? Why did you give me this great love? Why is your grace upon my life? Well, then God says that in the ages to come, he might show his exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us. In the ages to come. You know what those ages are to come? There, there's a day coming, the age, where Christ is going to come and he's going to restore all things. In the ages to come. See, his mercy has been revealed to me. His love has been given to me. His grace is upon me. That in the ages to come, he's going to show how great he is. Amen. He's going to show his exceeding greatness. Right. He's going to show that everything that is happening to you and me is because of the grace of God reflects in our heart, reflects in our life. It's a divine influence upon my heart. God changes me. That I may walk in the power of His might. That I might walk in the path of righteousness. That I might experience this love that in the ages to come, everyone's going to see that Jesus Christ is wonderful. Jesus Christ is beautiful. That Jesus Christ is incredible. That Jesus Christ is not willing that any of you perish, but all come to repentance. You can repent and receive the mercy of God. You can receive the love of God. You can receive the grace of God. And even as you hear the preaching of the word, the word goes forth. It gives you a revelation of where you're at. This is incredible. This is wonderful as the Spirit of the living God has come to convict you of sin, of, of righteousness and judgment to come. The Holy Spirit is here, moving upon your heart, revealing to you the things that separate you from God, the things that you have done that have been wrong, that are bad, that God would come and discipline you, reprove you, correct you, that you might receive His mercy, the riches of His mercy, the riches of His love. I get excited about that. When I think about the mercy of God, I think about the love of God, then His love overwhelms me. Oh, every day I stand in awe. I go, God, man, I'm just a loser. I'm a loser if you look down upon me. That every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of light above and that God blesses me. Oh, He gives me health. He gives me wisdom. Oh, He allows me to experience Him. I've tasted Him. I've tasted the Lord. And I want you to taste the Lord. Experience the Lord. Because when you taste the Lord and you have a revelation of God and His love, that He is willing to cover you and forgive you, Oh, then you see your sin in truth. Then you see your sin and you understand you must repent. You must repent. If you're having sex out of marriage, you repent and say, God, you are right. Holy matrimony is good. If you're lying to your parents, you say, God, tell the truth is what you take, what you take pleasure in. Oh, you come in truth. Truth in the inward part is God searches the heart. He searches right. my heart. Oh, I want to please Him. I want to make Him happy. I want to walk with Him to you. Do you want to walk with Jesus Christ? Do you want to experience what I'm talking about? you got to humble yourself. you got to realize your sin is what separates you from God. You have to see your need for forgiveness and call upon the name of the Lord. For God says, whoever calls upon me, he will be delivered and saved. He will be rescued. Will be set free. Right. When I'm speaking to you of, the, of his the riches, of his mercy, of the, the forgiveness of God demonstrated on the cross, that Christ showed the riches of his mercy when he hung upon the cross for the sins of the whole world, when he suffered, and when he was bruised and beaten for you and me. Oh, what do you believe? Do you see your sin? nailed to the cross and do you rejoice because now now you're forgiven now you have a hope of future now you know you know it because he has done this work in your life all oh, the evidence that you are born again the evidence that you are christian the evidence that you're 
sins are blotted out. Oh, as you have a delight to do God's will, you have a desire to please God. That's right. you, have, you have a passion for Him. You are totally devoted to Him. You have convictions. That means you know what's right or wrong. Oh yeah, you stopped smoking marijuana because you know it's wrong. Oh, oh you surrender. You surrender your pride. You get guys who need to turn with me. It's not a joke. Life is short. Life is but for a moment. We're just a, we just appear for a moment. We are like a vapor that appears for a little while, and then what happens? You vanish away. You don't understand. Your heart stops beating any moment. You're not in control. God is the one that has created you. God is the one that's where you've been born and raised and where you live. And he, can, he gave you life. And your life can be taken from you in a split second. Do you even think about that? Do you even wonder if you died right now? Would you go to heaven or hell? I don't want you to go to hell. That's a bad place. I know the terror of the Lord. I try to persuade you. I want you to enter into the kingdom of God. I want you to enter into the fullness of joy. I want you to experience true life. I don't want you to be lied to by Satan. He's a liar. The devil's a liar. He's a master deceiver. He has come to trick you. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy you. But Christ has come that you might have life. Christ has come that you might have peace, meaning the life, not just to smoke another blunt, not just to live your life uh, for the praise of men, the acceptance of men, because you're insecure, don't know who you are, your identity, you don't know the meaning, but when you come to Christ, oh, your identity, you're a child of God, oh, when you come to Christ, right. the security, your sins are forgiven, you are friends now with the creator of heaven and earth. To be friends with God is incredible. Amen. To be friends with him who speaks and it happens. To be friends with him who is the one that gives you life and breath, who keeps you, who is the one that provides all your needs. This is beautiful. We're not talking about something supernatural, it's in the invisible. I'm not talking about you can't see, but you know, because the Spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, oh, He comes and He reveals to you your sin, that you are a lawbreaker, you have broken God's law, you have done what is wicked in His sight, and you need a Savior. You need a Savior. Save you from what? Save you from the punishment of the sin that you have done, the things that you have done bad. Whether that's dishonoring your father and your mother, or lying, or, or saying the name of the Lord God in vain. There are, our sin is ever before us. Do you understand that, young man? Do you understand your sin is going to find you out? That means when you die, you stand before God, everything is revealed. Are you ready? Oh, I'm concerned about you. I have to go out and warn you of the coming I judgment. I don't believe in him. Oh, I want you to, though. We're oh, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you where he has shown his great mercy to you. Oh, surrender. Surrender to Christ and he will forgive you of your bad attitude. Surrender to Christ and he will take that wicked heart of unbelief. Oh, Christ will do this, young, young lady. Christ will do this, but you must repent. You must turn, surrender. Repentance is a change of mind. The way you are thinking is wrong. You are thinking wrong. You are living wrong. The words that come out of your mouth are wrong words. But when you come to Christ, He gives you a new heart, a new spirit. He causes you to walk in righteousness, speaking what is right, thinking right, doing right. With the power of the Spirit of God, enabling you to do what pleases God. Oh, young lady, I plead with you. Flee the wrath that is coming. Flee the anger of God. That's why I raise my voice. Multitudes are falling into the hell. Multitudes have rejected Jesus Christ. Broad is that road.